What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another 2018 NFL Draft Positional Rankings video. Today, we're doing interior defensive linemen. That's your 4-3-D tackles, your 3-4 ends, nose tackles, your guys that are fighting in the trenches, in between tackles, trying to contribute in the run game, but also rush the passer as well, especially for these top 10 players. Got to be able to do both. And I will apologize. I have been using highlights in these previous videos. Unfortunately, all of my videos have been getting demonetized. I kind of expected that, um, but I hope you understand me taking those out so that I can monetize the videos. I tried to throw more information into these graphics to give you a better look into my ratings on these guys. And then, of course, if you want to see what I think about every defensive tackle in this class and beyond over 400 players available in my draft guide. You can get this draft guide on Patreon or through PayPal. That's all in the description. In my opinion, call me biased, the most comprehensive draft guide you're going to be able to find out there for every position all in one is $10 on PayPal or through Patreon. So let's get into it here, starting at number one with one of my favorite players in this entire class, Maurice Hurst out of Michigan. I have an obsession with two things with NFL prospects. One is undersized defensive lineman, and two is a running back that's like 5'10", 220. That's for a different video. I like my D lineman compact because it's all about the low man, and Maurice Hurst is the definition of that. Now with Hurst, it's not just because he's quote unquote undersized, and he is 6'2", which is about the same height as Aaron Donald, and there are smaller guys in the league than that. But what Hurst does is just drive dudes back. His technique is fantastic, but he gets off the block and will make a tackle. He'll rush the passer better than anyone in this class. It's not even close for me for the best pass rushing interior guy. He's got good speed for his size, but he's super strong as well. My comparison for him is Mike Daniels. Now his tape is Aaron Donald-esque. I don't think he's quite the athletic freak that Donald is, but Mike Daniels definitely not a bad runner up for a comparison there. And Hurst does set himself apart. He is alone in the first tier here for defensive tackles. I'll be breaking up my players into tiers now to help you get a better grasp of where I sit with these guys. So number two, we got Vita Vea, just a massive, strong, individual uh holodi not a comparison here for vita vea you know he's the best run defender in this group good luck getting this guy to uh basically stick put if you're gonna run past him he is just gonna control his man and if you run anywhere near him he's gonna make an impact as a pass rusher i don't see him ever really being an impact pass rusher but could certainly be on the field and eat up blocks and get some push on third down and then my number three guy here is Deron Payne out of Alabama. I think he's pretty similar to what we had from Jonathan Allen coming out last year. Now he's not, uh, Payne isn't quite as polished as Allen is, but athletically they're about the same guy. And Payne was by no means bad in Alabama. So I think he goes somewhere in that 18 to 32 range. Definitely first round caliber prospect here. Uh, a pretty good ceiling as well. A guy that can really play in any scheme and is going to stop the run and is going to be one of the better pass rushing guys both coming in and as far as his potential goes. Just kind of another prototype ideal Alabama interior defender. And then my last guy here that I have as sort of a first round pick and in the second tier is Taven Bryan out of Florida. He's a super interesting guy. He is probably the most athletic guy in this entire class. Just explosive off the ball, really quick, and that's coming in at 6'4", 291. Now, if you want a comparison for him, it's actually like an inconsistent college J.J. Watt. He actually plays some edge rusher for Florida, but can also come inside. You know, he's probably going to be best fit as like a 3-4 end, I think. Sort of that 3-4 to four technique kind of guy, but he could actually maybe even be like a Michael Bennett type of player who's going to play on the end on first and second down and then move inside as an interior pass rusher. Really versatile guy here for Taven Bryan. You know, he's not the best run defender, but what he offers as potential for his pass rush ability is going to really boost this guy up. And then number five for me, someone I have as a sleeper in this class, Harrison Phillips out of Stanford. I mean, simply put, he's just a low center of gravity dude. One of the best run defending guys in this group. 
who's gonna come in, plug in right away as a starter. Someone teams are gonna have a hard time running at. Now, I don't know if he's gonna contribute as a pass rusher, but he did come out and show some good athleticism at the combine. Definitely boosted his stock a little bit, but I love Harrison Phillips. And then at number six, really intriguing guy here, Tim Settle out of Virginia Tech. If you look at him, really awkward body build, but a body shape that has worked for nose tackles in this league. I think of BJ Raji and Vince Wilfork. Now he had some inconsistencies in his game. From week to week, you didn't know which guy you were gonna get. So that's why I shy away from the Vince Wilfork thing a little bit, but he has that potential. Really, really explosive guy for his size. He's got thin ankles and moves his feet really well. So he can rush the passer. I think that's something he's gonna be able to do right away is line up over the center and drive that line backwards. Question is, can he get more consistent as a run defender? We'll see, he definitely showed it at times. So I got Settle going in the second to third round. And then my last guy in tier three here, RJ McIntosh, possibly one of the safer guys in this group. You know, good film, good athlete, but not really great in either department. He's boosted by the fact that he's one of the true four, three defensive tackles in this class who has a combination of pass rush and run defense that those four, three teams might value a little more. So he gets knocked a tiny bit for playing with one of the best D lines in all of college football for the last two years at Miami, but he does have some pretty good tape. He's got good athleticism, pretty good upside, but definitely a guy that can come in right away, get into that rotation as probably the third guy and then develop. So then getting into tier four here with my number eight defensive tackle, and it's Rasheem Green, and he's a polarizing prospect as well, more so than anyone in this group, actually. He is an absolute freak athlete, definitely the fastest guy in this group. I still think Taven Bryan is a little more quick twitch than Rasheem Green, but those two, man, there's a lot of potential between those two. Thing with Rasheem Green is he was moved all over the place in college. He's used as an edge rusher and an interior guy. He's 6'5", 275, so does he stay as an edge or does he bulk up and play inside? You know, at 6'5", I think if he gets to 290, he could be a really good defensive end in this league for a 3-4 defense, a three technique kind of guy. I'd rather he do that than try and get smaller and turn into an edge rusher because I just don't think he has that skill set. So, you know, he's got the second or tied for second in terms of potential in this class. He's not gonna wanna start right away. I actually think a little bit of like a Daniil Hunter. Now he's a different type of player, but the same kind of idea, right? You get him in the late second, early third round, sit him for a year, basically redshirt him, get him with a coach who has a plan for him. And just with his athleticism, he could turn into a nightmare to block. And a guy who can also rush the passer. That run defense is definitely his biggest liability right away and why you don't really want him on the field right now. Number nine, we got Deshaun Hand. Just another prototype Alabama versatile D lineman, right? Basically a poor man's Deron Payne. I think he's just a step below what we talked about with McIntosh, but a guy that can come in, rotate right away, has a little bit of upside, pretty good athlete, pretty good film, a little bit of inconsistency here and there, but another guy that's just gonna come in and get in that rotation right away with some upside to be a full-time starter in the NFL. And then at number 10, this is the last guy here, Nathan Shepard out of Fort Hayes. Now, he is a double redshirt senior, so he's like 25 years old but I really like what Shepard has to offer. He is a really athletic, big dude, 6'5", 315. He can move really well. And you know, obviously his tape at that level is really good. It should translate. When you see a guy at a low level like that, you wanna see good athleticism at the combine to reinforce that that kind of play is gonna translate. And Shepard definitely did that. He earned a lot of money at that combine. You know, I had him as like a fifth round pick before the combine. Now I've got him third to fourth round you know, if you are a competitive team right now who needs a third defensive lineman who's going to rotate in, Nathan Shepard's the perfect pick. You know, I think he's ready to play right away, but he does also have that upside of what if he really is as good against NFL competition as he was down at Fort Hayes, then you've got yourself a starting defensive tackle here in the third round. He definitely has that athletic potential but I would expect some sort of a drop off there. So that's the list, that's the top 10 list. I do need to give a quick shout out to Steven Richardson, mention those undersized guys, Deidre and Sonat as well out of USF. Both these guys around six feet, Steven actually a little less than six feet. You know, I think of like a Grady Jarrett with those two who went in the fifth round 
to Atlanta and is one of the best pass rushing defensive tackles in the NFL because of that size. So I, I just want to plug that. I love those undersized D linemen. Deidre's not, and especially Steven Richardson here has some sleepers here that didn't quite crack the top 10. So that's it, guys. We'll see you next time for Edge Rushers. Cheers. Peace out.